Björn Spak from the Swedish Environmental Protection Agency. You will present uh, the EU uh, PEF process, its actual and potential use from the policy perspective. So welcome Björn. Thank you very much, Sara. So I'm uh, Björn Spak. I'm with the uh, Swedish Environmental Protection Agency. Uh, my main focus areas are the environmental footprints and eco-design uh, issues. Uh, and uh, of course, um, in my presentation, I'll go through where we are get, getting a bit more tangible with the environmental footprints. Um, so. Uh, in uh, after, after a lot, many many years, I would say, after the 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 uh, first the, the pilot phase and the transition phase, it wasn't that clear, perhaps, uh, where uh, the um, legislative um, actions would be would be given with the environmental footprints. But as of uh, last uh, March, now uh, over a year ago, the the circular account economy action plan was uh, released. And uh, uh, in it, uh, there are a, a couple of mentionings of the environmental footprints. I have some issues here to get the uh, switch. Ah, there we are. So uh, the uh, Circular Economy Action Plan has explicit mentionings of the environmental footprint methodology in two different parts. One is for design of sustainable products uh, under the, the review of the Eco Design Directive, where the environmental footprint methodology is one of the, the kind of the keys to expand towards um, a, a possible Eco Design Directive that is outside the reach of energy related products. And uh, the other part where uh, uh, the uh, environmental footprints are mentioned uh, is uh, within empowering the consumers and then specifically green claims. Uh, besides these two explicit mentionings, the uh, Circular Economy Action Plan also has a lot of other initiatives. And one of them uh, is the uh, new legislation for batteries. And if you look further into that, uh, uh, it says in, in these pro this proposed battery regulation, it stipulates that the environmental footprint rules should be used for mandatory carbon footprint calculation and limits. Uh, so uh, where are we currently? What is the progress of these initiatives? So the, the green claims uh, had a public consultation that ran until December uh, last year. And uh, the legislative proposal is scheduled for quarter two this year. So in, in good time for Swedish uh, summer holiday, I would say. Uh, the Sustainable Products Initiative has a public consultation which is currently running. So you have a chance to um, participate in that until June 9th. And the legislative proposal is scheduled for quarter four this year. Uh, in the, the next meeting in the IPP SCPRE, uh, which will be held in late May, uh, of course, there will probably be more uh, information about this if the dates will be adjusted or whatever. Uh, th that much about those two. Then if we look to the battery regulation, that is, I would say, ahead of the, the sustainable products initiatives and the green claims. Uh, the proposal uh, was submitted in uh, December uh, last year, and it's scheduled to uh, enter into force January 1st next year. Uh, but that is, of course, providing that the negotiations are finished on time, which will be, I would say, in October. Uh, currently, that is a bit of a challenge, apparently. Uh, in the battery regulation, the uh, environmental footprints are, are mentioned in, in like three different uh, uh, delegated acts for carbon footprint reporting, for performance classes and for maximum levels. And the dates here are of course all then uh, providing that it will be accepted in, uh, uh, in October and, and enter into force in, in January next year. Uh, the way the battery regulation mentions the environmental footprints, um, I mean, of course, th that is just one, one of the parts in the battery regulation, uh, is uh, for the carbon footprint assessment, uh, impact assessment. And it says the, the, the carbon footprint of the battery shall be calculated using the climate change life cycle impact assessment method recommended in the 2019 JRC report. So, so this is an example where they use one of the impact categories uh, for one purpose. And uh, um, I think um, 
uh, this uh, we might very well see this kind of legislation in more areas uh, coming further. Um, uh, I've also been looking into a bit the green public procurement criteria where the uh, environmental footprints are mentioned, but not in the current uh, or, or the most uh, currently uh, updated criteria documents, but in those for office buildings and road design, etc., from 2016. And there the, the reference is only to uh, the critical review part uh, where uh, it says something about it. Uh, eco design, as I said, on, on one hand, that, that's part of the sustainable products initiative, but we also have the, the current eco design uh, framework. Uh, and uh, in this, there, there is this methodology for eco design of energy related pro pro products, the MEERP, which is a very important part. And that in turn has uh, as one of its components, the eco report tool, where you make calculations uh, for uh, this eco design measures. And this tool and actually the entire MEERP is currently under revision. It was started last year. Uh, and uh, in this uh, startup meeting, it was said that the relevance of de the development of the product environmental footprints methods to the MEERP and the eco report tool for assessing life cycle impacts. So uh, the first stakeholder meeting is then anticipated for June this year. And uh, there is then I would say a, a good chance that the EF will um, influence also here in the current ECOSAIN framework. Thank you very much.